have, um, I apologize for starting late. Um, I was having technical difficulties <laughs> with several things. But I'm glad that you're here on this Memorial Day where we will uh, celebrate our country, our soldiers, our, those who gave up their lives, and our God in the gift of the Holy Spirit because it's also Pentecost. And um, it's hard when two things come on the same day. But I think that um, I have to tell you that our missionaries made it safely to Ghana. I got, I think, butt dialed from Krista because <laughs> I could hear this meeting going on. <laughs> I hung up on from that. Um, next Sunday, Cape Park services start at 7.30 a.m. And I hope to see many of you there, and I hope to see many of you here at the, at the, on the same day. Um, I'm hoping or planning to do something a little more interactive at the Cape Park services so that we can... Um, sometimes I feel like I just talk at you. And I'd like to have some repertoire back together. Uh, June 11th is... Music Sunday, am I correct? You are correct. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. And January 18th is our annual organizational meeting. Am I correct June. about that? Not June. January. <laughs> it says June here. That's what. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. I will have Bruce has an announcement, and I invite you to come up. So this is a day that the Lord hath made. It's also, rejoice and be glad in it, and uh, it's also the day you've been waiting for, because today tickets for the Decatur Creek concert go on sale after church. Now I'm sure you all of you who were here last week ran home and put the date on your calendar. Uh, and if you didn't or you weren't here, I have more. Um, also, in addition to having tickets for sale, I'm going to try something that we did at Clear Lakes Corral, which was very successful, and that is if you wish to invite friends, families to come, you'll be able to sign out tickets and sell them to those people, which the advantage to them is they don't have to go down to Blacks and buy them, they can buy them from you. And then you simply return tickets, they're unsold, no pressure, you don't have to do this, but you've been tickets un unsold, and uh, the money for the tickets you sold at a later date, and that way hopefully we can increase our sales. More than one-third of the Clear Lakes Corral tickets that were sold in the last concert were sold by members of the Corral. And being a fundraising event for the church, we hope that we have a similar uh, effort here. Um, there's another advantage that I didn't think of, a friend of mine thought of this. You know, if you put this on your calendar, and somebody comes up to you, even if you're not definitely going, and somebody comes up to you and says, would you do this or would you do that, and you really don't want to do it, you can always say, I'm sorry, I already have something on the calendar for that time. Thank you very much.
Come, let us bless the Lord who commands the wind. Come, let us bless our great and glorious Maker, giver of all good gifts. of fire and wind, we confess we have missed the movement of your spirit in our lives and in your world. We have not been a spirit-led church. We have not pursued your anointing or your sanctifying presence. We have not lived in holiness. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from a life of bondage into life in the Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hear the good news. All who believe in Jesus Christ will have streams of living water flowing from within, streams of refreshing and of power. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and empowered. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Ribbit. Just one ribbit? Yes, but I forget the name, even though we have a tree frog. A tree frog? What does a tree frog say? Um. <laughs> now you know the difference. Tell me something. Do you know what or who, let me say it that way, who the Holy Spirit is? Who is the Holy Spirit? God. God is, is, that's right. God is the Holy Spirit. Gimme is the frog? Okay, let's, let's, I want to tell you a story here. The Holy Spirit has a wonderful story, and it happens on a day called Pentecost which we're celebrating here today. Did you notice a lot of people are wearing red? Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing red too, right? Okay, so when the day of Pentecost came, way back when the disciples were taking on the job, it's okay, it's okay. His story's probably better than this one. <laughs> So the Holy Spirit arrived in all the people and they heard the sound of the rush of a violent wind. You know what that sounds like? I think we all better try to make the rush of a violent wind here sound. Oh, yeah, the and you know what? It was so loud and it was so raucous and so busy that everybody there in Jerusalem ran out into the streets. They ran out there to see what was going on. What do you think was going on? I think there was a ruckus. There was a ruckus. <laughs> I know what happened. You know, the Holy Spirit. You know, our God is three gods in one. He makes one God, and one of the names is Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a specific job to do. Jesus, God created us and created the world. Jesus came to show us how to live the right way. And the Holy Spirit came to advocate for us and to guide us as we take on the importance of spreading the faith. And we do it sometimes with the sound of a violent wind. Woo, I'm blowing over. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit before? The Holy Spirit, yeah. What do you think the Holy Spirit's job is? 
to keep everyone safe. Yes, that is good. And when we listen to the Holy Spirit, we often can be kept safe. That's right. What else? Anything else? You know what? When the disciples all came out at the sound of the violent wind, they rushed into the street, and all the other people in Jerusalem rushed into the street because they were there for a festival. They didn't know the Holy Spirit was coming that day. And they all made fun of the disciples. They said, oh, these guys have been into the sauce a little early. <laughs> They're phonies. But the disciple Peter stood up and he said, friends, these people are not acting funny. They are responding to the Holy Spirit. They are responding. And all the people, and then Peter said, he raised his voice, and what he said about the Holy Spirit and about God and about Jesus was so exciting and so so forceful in a good way that 3,000 people who were in that crowd became believers in Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Do you ever talk about Jesus at home? No? Well, I think that maybe you should, um, if you want to, go home and talk about Jesus and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit blowing in. And you know, you can make that sound of the violent wind. And you can wave your arms back and forth like the Spirit was coming and affecting everybody. And then you learn more about him together as a family. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's good, huh? That's good. We all learn too. So thank you for being here today. And I think there are coloring pages and things like that around. You got those? All right, let's go. That's my page. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you've heard uh, a summary of the story, but let's, let's listen to how Luke tells us this story in Acts. He says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. That sound filled the entire house and divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Assyria, Asia, excuse me, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. But then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sounds pretty frightening, doesn't it? But it was actually good news, as only God can give it. Pentecost was a Jewish festival that vigorously celebrated in those days the wheat harvest. The wheat harvest. It was the time to praise God for the harvest since wheat was a staple in their diet. They would eat for another year. The thing about the Pentecost celebration was that all the Jewish men, even if they lived in those other countries, were required to travel to and be physically present in for Pentecost. And this Pentecost was a religious event that occurred 50 days after Passover. And here we are celebrating too. The Jews came from many countries far and wide, and that's why there's that long list of unpronounceable names at the start of Acts 2, the list that puts fear in the heart of every liturgist. Don't make me read that, Pastor. I don't know what to, how to say it. But the, all those people, that, there's, they're there, and they didn't just happen to be in Jerusalem that day. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven. Now maybe today is the first day you've heard this story, and I hesitate to call it a story because it's a real life event. Or maybe you've heard it over and over and over again. You have a memory of hearing that long list of names, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Romans, Cretans, Arabs, perhaps even Peter's quoting the prophet Joel in chapter two. It's a story that harvests hope from the recent past and the long, long past of God's people. And today we stop long enough to ask questions about the text that we might normally gloss over, like this one. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Now, who is all together in one place? What place is this? We might assume that the who was the original 11 disciples plus the new guy, Matthias, but it was really all together walking or being pushed into the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send these frightened followers another advocate, one who was named the Holy Spirit. Yes, Pentecost was a very important day in the life of the Jews. The wheat harvest was essential. 
But this Pentecost was no ordinary Pentecost. And this would prove to be no ordinary harvest. Peter recognized the significance of the wind. He'd read the scrolls and he was able to put it all together because he knew the scriptures. Yes, this is the same Peter, think of this, who denied Jesus three times only 50 days before. Yet he was the one who made the connection and pointed it out to everybody. Evangelism began on the day of Pentecost. And if Peter could be chosen to mark such an important day, who are we to say God's not working through us? Peter preached it loud and clear. This is what Joel prophesied, that God declares that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, which would lead to a different kind of harvest. These are, this is the harvest. Sons and daughters prophesying, young men seeing visions, and old men dreaming dreams. Slaves, both men and women prophesying too. Note the inclusivity in here. Sons and daughters, young and old, the rich and the poor, new visions and ancient prophecies fulfilled all together and in one place. Yet not for very long. Time is of the essence, as they say, but I say to you, we are the sons and daughters, the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the hungry and the well-fed. All are called, no matter who we are, where we've come from, or where we think we're going, we are essential to the harvest. It happens. You know, I once thought I would be a lifer at Houghton Mifflin Company. I'd be a vice president one day. But no, you see, God can use anyone and everyone, no matter who they are or where they are on their journey, to become God's harvesters. Pentecost, it's more than a windy day. It's not speaking in tongues that no one else understands. What's the use of that? God wants us to understand, and so God speaks to us in the sound of the rush of a violent wind. It gets our attention. There is a worldwide field waiting for the harvest, and we, my friends, are better get going. Our response to the Spirit's call matters. We have to get used to some things about the Spirit in our lives, suddenly, suddenly it came. Sometimes God moves suddenly. We don't have time to weigh all the options or sit around and think about it for a year or two. Sometimes it's right now. Sound, it was real, though it could not be touched, didn't feel the wind blowing, it came by the ears. From heaven, it wasn't of earth, not created or manipulated or made here. And it was mighty, full of force, coming with great power. Only Christ can call people to new life. Many of these people in Jerusalem were still there from Passover. 40 days before, and they were witnesses to an angry, hell-bent mob that demanded the execution of Jesus. They were there, they witnessed it. And maybe even some of them had had the words, crucify him on their own tongues of fire. Think about that moment. The crowd forced Pilate to execute Jesus. Crucify him, they screamed. 
Even they who screamed were there in the experience of the sound of the rushing wind, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Even they were not excluded from God's harvest. We need a second or third or 40th look at Peter. Peter kept going on even after he had done the most egregious thing. Everything suddenly came together for him. The unbelief, the wanting of a seat next to Jesus on his throne, the purpose of his denials and testimonials, all of it, every syllable was true. Yet, God used Peter to proclaim the truth of Christ's kingdom like a herald. Peter voiced the promise and the plan God had in mind from the very day that Adam and Eve ate the fruit in Eden. Peter's sermon comes from the Holy Spirit itself and summarizes the church's proclamation that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. What happened? on that far from ordinary day in the temple courts. There was an extraordinary invitation to anyone, everyone, no matter race, religion, gender, the color of their eyes, the numbers of their fingers and toes, or their status in their communities at home or abroad. Through the amazing an astonishing gift of the Holy Spirit, both body and soul can feed freely on the gift of God's grace. There is no end. There is no famine unless we refuse to go into the field and harvest the holy wheat God has planted there and is waiting for our souls to take in, to consume. Thanks be to God, my friends, that we continue to hear the sound of rushing wind that can draw all peoples together to be one day one in the Spirit. Amen?
You may be seated. Sticking my pen. <laughs> Here we have the opportunity to share with one another our celebrations and our concerns. We have Connie and Joanne who will bring the microphone to you because we all want to hear what you have to say. And so, who would like to start? Merle back there or Helen? I'm sorry, we'll come to you, Merle. <laughs> Helen. Thank you, I actually have several requests. I have a request for my friend Mary Kay whose husband died on Monday. I have a request for the family of Ken, our neighbor who died suddenly on Tuesday. And I also have a request for prayers for my daughter, Sarah, whose dear friend, Emily, who was only 38, died suddenly on Wednesday. And I also ask for prayers for Emily's family. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Okay, Merle. I would just like to thank everyone for their generous donations to the Pass Along Project. Um, we counted. Uh, Connie, Wendy, and I counted the items. There were 97 items, wow. clothing items, and $70 worth of gift cards. I will be um, meeting up with Lynette probably next week, so if anybody has anything else they forgot to bring, the box will be there for the remainder of the week. But thank you all so much. I know they'll appreciate it. Thank you, that's great. Anyone else? How about over here? You have something? Connie, can you come over here? Our little friend right here in the second row. <coughs> I pray for my for my half brother in the army not not to die trying to help our country. Mm. Thank you. What's his name, hon? What's his name? Anthony? Anthony. Okay, anyone else? Okay, then. That was a funny noise. <laughs> So friends, on this Pentecost day, let us be together in the spirit of prayer. God of the great wind and God of the gentle breath, your people join here this morning to be all together in one place, just as the followers of Christ did the morning of Pentecost that no ordinary Pentecost. Lean into our being and refresh our souls for the summer journey ahead. We shall listen for your guidance. We shall rise to the call of your spirit and take your word to others we will meet on the journey. You have heard the names and situations of those who have been called into our prayer time. Helen's friend Mary Kay, whose husband died, and uh, the friend Ken, who died on Tuesday, and Sarah's dear friend, who died on Wednesday. Um, we are celebrating that um, people have responded to the Pass Along project with items and gift cards. And for Capuchetti's half-brother, Anthony, who is serving our country right as we speak. Here are more prayers that we wish to speak to you from our hearts in the silence. <clears throat> As we think of journeys, we also raise up the men and women, the children and the parents of all who have served our country at the risk of their lives their futures, their independence, leaving widows and widowers and orphans because they made the ultimate sacrifices. 
Let us never, never forget. And Lord, we ask you to be with us every day as we go forward into unknown futures and help us to trust that you have the mastery of our faith in your eternal heart. In thanksgiving we say, Amen. Black, page 772. as God has so graciously provided for us in a multitude of ways, let us return to God with gifts of gratitude and glory.
Let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Lord God, through Christ you have given us peace that the world cannot give. Let your spirit of truth abide with us so that through our gifts we may live in hope, grow in faith, and keep your commandments of love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our final hymn is Spirit of God, Bright Wind. It's also an insert, and I invite you to let out that sound. <laughs>
Go now, my friends, into the world. The Spirit is in you all over the place. Just take it out and share it and speak it and give it and let others know there is hope in our world. And may God be with you all till we meet again. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Amen.